Um, I've never seen a magic trick in real life. What? Okay, you need to tell me. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've only ever seen... I've seen lots of magic on telly. I've watched all the magic shows on TV. Right. I've, I've never I've never seen any magic in You've never life. done a one-to-one magic no, trick? This never. Is the fir- this is the first ever? Yeah. <laughs> wow. But this is even more exciting. Oh, Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> right? So, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me for an Audible Sessions interview. This is the first one of these I've ever done. You know that. That's so exciting. So you yeah. have a brand new book. Yeah. It's called Max Magic. It is. Um, it's a kid's book. It has a wonderful main character. To start with, what did you want to pass on to the next generation by writing this? Well, this is how it all began. Over, over I'd say, a period of maybe eight, maybe even ten years, I've been asked to write a book. And I've always said no for, for a few reasons. One, I don't think I was ready. Um, second, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a matter of getting a story out there. Um, because literally it was like, look, you know, you don't really have to write a lot of it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, 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 if we're going to do it, we need to do it properly. And that was really, really important. And also, I wanted the story to mean something to me rather than just a fictional story. Um, I wanted it to relate to, to my life and also my family life because of various things that we've all been through and also how we care for each other. We're a very close family. So the main thing about Max Magic is... I want, I want the readers to take away the fact that no matter how, how hard things get, anything can be done, anything can be achieved. Um, and the reason I say that is that at school, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't very clever. Um, I didn't read books a lot, um, which is why I said to you before we started, yeah, were, you, were you always a good reader? Because I wasn't. Um, and in terms of subjects, you know, I love music, I love drama, but apart from that, that was really it. They were the, my loves. And I think as soon as you decide on what subject you want to do at school, I think that influences the sort of friends that you have. Mm. Um, so Max Magic brings you through a whole sort of chapter of my life, you know, from being at school, from certain struggles that I had, um, and how magic absolutely helped me from, from those days to the present day. So Max is your main character. Yeah. How much is he based on you? How much is he you? Honestly, he is me. Okay. So, so that was... That was the important thing for me. You meet my two brothers. Um, actually, I use their real names. And my sister, Susie, she's in the book. And, and my, the whole family is my family. And my friends are my friends. So, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like a mini, a mini auto. I'm too young to do an autobiography, obviously. <laughs> uh, but it's like the first sort of chapter of my life. And also, it might generate a whole new breed of magicians, both boys and girls. Yeah. So if Max is based on you, yeah. then I know from reading the book that you don't like spicy food. No, I don't. No. <laughs> Have you had any disasters? Or? I, okay, I can, I can list these. We could be here all day and night. You know, even when this finishes, I can care and tell you about these situations. There's an amazing thing where there's myself, there's Ant, there's Emma Willis, and they try to make me eat an oyster. And they put, um, this tells you how you know, uneducated I am with food. What's the, uh, the, the sauce? A Tabasco sauce, yeah. right? They put that on the oyster. And they went, just go for it. Just give it a go. Just, you, you're going to be great. So like an idiot, I, I literally swallowed this oyster. Well, that was game over. My, my lips felt like they were tyres. I had to go home because I just <laughs> couldn't deal with it. It's that bad. Yeah, it's really bad. And if you were to, you know, if you were to do like a taste test now, it would be, I, I'd, I'd most probably get very hot and very uncomfortable. Well, I'm not going to. Oh, thank so goodness. You're right. um, so, yeah, so that's, so yeah, very plain eater. So, Max is a very plain eater as well. So, tell me about your time at school. In this book, there is a big bully. Botley. George Botley, yes. Were you bullied at school? Yes. Yeah, so, again, I think it was just the right time to, to not only write the book, but also to go, look, actually, I've got five nephews, I've got a niece as well, and I know one of them's going through a bit of a, a hard time at school. So I thought, do you know what, I am going to mention this, because there was a moment in school, and I'll tell you exactly what happened, right? And again, you're the first person I'm telling this, so um, I won't say his real name, but I know his real name, and he knows his real name, more to the point, and I wore a similar jacket. I was bought a new jacket by my mum. And I went to school and his jacket was quite similar. And he went just 
he was so angry that he made me stand on the way home in the middle of the park. And he said, if you move from the middle of the park until I leave the park, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to beat you up. And I didn't, I stood in the middle of the park like, like an animal. It was absolutely terrible. And I remember that vividly. And then, and then he knew he'd got me, you see. So, so it, every day it was that thing of, oh, I hope I don't see blah, blah, blah. I hope I don't see, oh, I have seen him. So that is the character of George Botley because once a bully's got you, then, then you're in trouble unless you, unless you deal with it. And it's a very easy situation to say to any kid, you need to stand up to the bully. Well, anyone can say it. You know, even in the workplace, you, you go, you need to stand up to your boss because they're constantly, well, it's easier said than done. So magic for me was was a bit of an escape, really. Honestly, without it, it could have been a battle. So that's why I think it's really, really important for me. And always, I've, I've kept doing it. You know, even though the majority of stuff now is is hosting and presenting stuff, I'll always do the magic. So the, the thread throughout the book, and I say at the very start, and I wrote a, a really important message that before the even before you even start reading the story, that. A lot of people try and, you know, pull the rug from underneath you or try and dash your dreams. But, and I've dealt with a lot of stuff where people have gone, you can't do it. But you've got to have that that inner faith to go, yes, I, yeah, I can. Anything is possible. Yeah. And that's that's the thread of the book, is that anything is possible. Um, so we're going to do some tricks in a sec. But first, okay. when did you first start saying douche? Okay, so <laughs> so what? So everybody seems that it's the hardest thing, right? In entertainment, it's the hardest thing to find a catchphrase. Okay. So I say douche, unbelievable. That's what I say. And I think I, I think it was I was showing a friend of mine a trick, and they were they were blown away by it. And because of their reaction, I got excited. I went douche, <laughs> and it was like, well, yeah, I know, and I don't even know what it means. It doesn't mean anything. It's like. Yeah, so and then I started do, punching the air with it, and then I started doing it on TV, and and then I have people, honestly, um, and I say this with a big smile because I find it incredibly endearing as well. So people that are driving down and they'll literally wind the window down or shoot down. I go, "Hey, Steve, douche!" And it's like, "Yeah, douche," um, or unbelievable. But unbelievable, I use a lot because I do find things unbelievable, whether it's. Um, yeah, anything. You may tell me a story, I'll go, unbelievable. And it just works. It works for anything. Whether it's <laughs> happiness, unbelievable. Sadness, oh, it's just unbelievable. It just, <laughs> it's, a, it's like a universal word yeah. that just sums everything up. Yeah. The water. Let's have a look. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Sorted for sports commentary. Oh, um, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Unbelievable, Jeb, yeah. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's it came up came about by pure pure accident. Just yeah, I was just excited. Um, can we do some magic tricks? Yeah. So you ready to see some magic? Very ready. Okay. Very ready. Do you like magic? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Right. Okay. So look, um, I've got a pack of cards, and they've not been shuffled. They've just been taken out of their box. Okay. But when I took them out of the box, I decided to do a little design on the back. This is like Mini Max. All right. Okay. Now all of the pictures on the back are slightly different. So as I flick through them, it'll make like a little animation, like an old cartoon. Yeah. Right? So Mini Max is going to do you his own little act. Okay. But he needs you to pick a card first of all. So just pick any card. Just name any card you want. Red, um, right, no, you name Eight it. of hearts. The eight of hearts. So let's go through nice and slow. And let's take out the eight of hearts. So all in all, it's easy to find. Here we go. Right, now, let's place your card. Now, before we do this, by the way, just explain to everybody that I haven't set anything up. I didn't tell you beforehand to say the eight of hearts. Yeah, no, okay, not at all. We'll place it just there. Now watch. Everyone at home watching this right now, and you get ready. This truly is unbelievable, right? Look. So Max takes off his hat, reaches inside, and pulls out what looks like a rabbit, but is in fact a card. He could have picked out any playing card at all, but he's gone for the one that you picked, the eight of hearts. <laughs> How mad is that? What? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. And like any good magician, he never does it again. And you could, if you had picked another one, I'd have got it wrong. 
Unbelievable. <laughs> so that was very cool. Yeah. So, do you believe I could read your mind? Um, maybe. Well, let's leave it there. Great. <laughs> no, no, we'll try it. Um, so imagine I've got a pack of cards in my hand here. Yeah. All right. I want you to see any card you want. Just okay. see one. Yeah. Visualise it, because I'm going to take it out. I'm going to turn it the other way around and put it back inside the pack. Okay. okay? So the pack I've now just had is in your hand. What was the card that you think you saw that I turned around, put back inside the pack and turned the other way? Seven of diamonds. This is unreal. Look, I'm going to hold the cards up so everyone can see them, right? Look nice and slow, I won't mess about with them. The seven of diamonds, you could have picked any card. Look, go through nice and slow. Make sure you see this, it's one card. One card, one of 52. Does everyone pick the seven of diamonds? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. Of course they don't. Yes. Yeah. So, but that's what I mean. It's that. It's that. It's that thing that. What other art form can deliver that? Where it's just amazement. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Stephen, this has been such a pleasure. Such oh, a I've joy. I've loved it. Um, and I love the book. Thank you so much. And Thank you. I love that it's based on your life. Um, and yeah, I just hope that everyone else enjoys it. Yeah. Well, this, is, this has been a pleasure, honestly. Lovely to meet you as well. You too.